Hi, I'm John from Our Home From Scratch, and in this video, I'm going to show you a second way to make inset cabinet doors. So, the most popular video I have on YouTube is a um, tutorial on making inset cabinet doors. And when I made that video, I showed you the method I usually use to make uh, those types of doors. And in that process, I used a table saw to make the tongue and grooves. And I also, to, to fit the door into the face frame, so there's a little gap around it, I, I made the door actually to that size. I didn't make it bigger uh, and then trim it in. I made it the exact size that I kind of wanted it. And it, it, it was, it's a pain. So after I posted the video, I got a few comments and feedback that uh, there was a couple easier ways to do it. So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, an alternative way of making inset cabinet doors and cabinet doors in general. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to be using the table saw to make the tongue and groove on the, on the rails and styles of the door. I'm going to be using a router table and two specialty router bits. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be doing, instead of making it just slightly smaller than the opening, uh, these inset doors I'm actually going to make a little bit bigger or a, roughly the same exact size as the opening and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trim them in a little bit uh, either using my joiner or um, a table saw and a cross cut slide or something. So, um, so this video will kind of give you an alternative means of, of making cabinet doors. So uh, let's get started. Okay, we're going to start this process at the router table. All of the boards for the doors, the, both the rails and styles, we'll get a groove down the center. Okay, so this is a router bit that puts that groove in there. And I'm, what I'm doing is adjusting the height of the blade of that router bit so it matches the middle of that board. Okay, so my first pass on the router table, I'm going to be putting a groove in on all the boards. Okay, and uh, I push the, the, each board in one time. And after the first pass, I'm, and it comes through here, I'm going to take the board and flip it over. And what that does is it makes sure that this groove is centered right in the middle of that board. Okay, so um, this is the same thing I'd be doing on the table saw if I were using a dado blade. Same basic process I did in, in the first video. Okay, so now it's time to put the tongues on the rails. So the rails are the top and bottom of each door or each face frame. That's what's referred to as the rail. So this is the um, tongue bit here. So it's basically the mirror opposite of the groove bit, all right? So I have a little guide rail there in the deck of the router, and I have a little push block. So I'm using uh, that push block to, to get a nice steady uh, push through there. I'm also using a kind of a destructive board behind it to prevent tear out. Okay, so now let's get to fitting. So this is the face frame I built for my cabinets. And what I did the first time I did this was I tried to make this door smaller. I'm not doing that now. I'm making each door part fit into the opening so the rails and styles fit exactly into the door um, snugly. So it's like an interference fit. So what I'm going to do is assemble it, push it through, uh, and you'll see it just kind of, it is the same size as the opening almost exactly. Okay, so you get them all squared up. So I know the door is, is, it's not functional like this because it's too big. It needs to be trimmed down. But hey, it's, it's the perfect size, right? So that's what we wanted to do here. Uh, you can adjust the size by either cutting the rail lengths or by adjusting the, the, um, or the style lengths. Okay, so now it's time for the center panel. This is a um, rabbiting router bit. And I have a half inch piece of plywood here. And I'm just putting a rabbit around uh, the whole perimeter of this board and uh, it'll insert into the groove. Also something I did with a, with a table saw on, in the previous video. So now this is time for glue up. So we see I have my rails there on the side, uh, the styles there on the sides. I have my rails. All I'm going to do here is just put some glue on the tongues of those rails. Okay, you don't want to glue in the center panel because you want the center panel to kind of float and, and expand and contract. Um, so you don't need glue the whole, the whole length of those grooves. It just kind of um, goes together like this. The center panel will then slide into that groove we created with our grooving bit. And uh, I'm just using regular wood glue. It's going to squirt out of the joints a little bit. Again, this is the same part. This part of the process is the same as that first video where, uh, you know, this is just a regular glue up. So 
Uh, you can see you're just doing this on a flat surface and just kind of pushing each part together. Just, just, just probably just the easiest way to do it. I'm also going to have a wet paper towel on hand uh, in case I need to wipe up any glue drips, uh, anything that comes out of the seams. I'm going to use some uh, decent cabinet clamps here and uh, to squeeze these joints together and more glue will come out. So we want to make sure that uh, you have a, something to wipe it up with. A baby wipe would be fine, uh, but you know I find like a damp paper towel works great too. So uh, these are the clamps I use. They're kind of expensive, 30, 40 bucks. I think these are 24, 36 inch long clamps. Worth getting if you're going to be doing some cabinet work. Uh, they're more expensive the longer they get, obviously. So this, these are the longest ones I own, like this. Um, the other styles I have are like a uh, pipe clamp for really long ones, but uh, for short ones like this, this is, these are great clamps. So what I'm going to do is just basically push these together, tighten these up, and then I'll let this glue cure overnight, uh, 24 hours at least, and then um, we'll be set to do the next step of the process. So now we, you know, again, these drawers are built, these doors in, are built to the face frame. Okay, so I haven't done anything yet. Right now I'm just marking each door, and that's the drawer front there. That's just a solid piece of poplar. And I'm marking them just to so I know which way is up. So when I go back to put these in and fit them up, I'm not guessing, oh geez, which is which. Okay, so now what I'm doing, and this is a technique I, I learned uh, from a guy named Chad Statton, who, and I'll send a link to his video. Um, he used a uh, very similar technique to what he's doing. So this is the part where we're going to be fitting the doors. So what I'm going to do is I prop the perimeter of the face frame up with some half inch boards, and I'm pushing the doors and the drawer front back into the face frame. So it recesses them. Now I'm using laminate countertop samples. I'm going to use two of them together because I think I just like that thickness. And that's the thickness I want my inset gap to be. All the way around the doors and drawers, that's the thickness of that, of that gap. So I'm going to take a pencil, and I'm going to take these laminate samples, and I'm just going to trace the, this mark here. And it, it just basically sets a distance between the face frame and, and that, um, those laminate samples. Okay, it's around an eighth of an inch thick, maybe a little under that. Uh, Chad's video, he uses one of these. I like the look of two of them. Um, whatever you want to do, uh, but so I'm going to do this perimeter outline here with a pencil, and I'm going to do it on both this drawer front and the, and the both doors. Okay, so to trim the door front, the drawer front rather, um, I'm going to at the ends anyway. I'm just going to use a miter saw. I'm going to cut right to that line, flip it over, and cut the other side too. Now for the lengths, I'm using a joiner here. This is a Jet six inch joiner. And I have a line on both the top and the bottom of this board, and I'm just going to run this board through my joiner to to the point where I get down to that pencil mark. If you don't have a joiner, you can do this in the table saw. But ultimately, if you're going to be one of doing cabinet work, you really do need a joiner. Uh, this is a higher end one, but they have bench top ones that are great. So now we're going to repeat the process in the doors for the sides for the styles. I'm going to do the same thing I did the drawer. Just run them right through the joiner, just like that. I can't do that for the top and bottom though because I have end grain facing down. So what I'm going to do is as I make the pass, I'm going to want to lift up the door right near the end just like that so I don't pull the joiner all the way through the door. Otherwise it'll tear out pretty badly. Okay so here's what it looks like after I painted it. So it's installed, painted, I used uh, some nice bloom hinges. So um, this is a cabinet for our office. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. I have a link in the description to our blog. Thanks for stopping by. In the next video, I'll probably show you the best way after I've done both methods here, what I like best. Thanks.